Hi, everyone. I'm here with David Wright. David is at our studio in Carson City at the Fitness for 10, where he is a personal trainer. Thanks for being with us, David. Thanks for having me, Steve. Let's talk about diets. Now, diet is very important. And probably everyone at one point or another has gone on some type of a diet where they're following guidelines or something. Maybe it's called this or called that or whatever. But there's a lot of them out there and there's a lot of ways of eating. Ways, a way of eating to me would be like uh, keto or um, vegan, vegetarian, carnivore, um, Mediterranean. Those are ways of eating, but they're kind of diets too. So um, I just, we're going to talk about some of the issues that people have when they do these diets. I think the biggest thing is they set a goal and they reach it. And then that's where the problem starts. I did it. Okay. I can wear my bathing suit to the beach. Yeah. Well, what about tomorrow? I'm going to look really good for my wedding. <laughs> okay. But now what are you going to do? You can't just go back and eat the way you were. You have to change your lifestyle, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you pointed out a lot of a lot of good uh, points there, Steve, in terms of some of the different, you know, diets that are out there. And I understand, you know, dietary restrictions for a lot of people, medical reasons, etc. You know, allergies, whatnot. Um, But yeah, I mean, there's there's quite a bit. A lot of these uh, different, you know, diets. Um, unless it's medically prescribed for some reason, a lot of times it, you know, I, I'm not a doctor or statistician, so I would just say off the top of my head, you know, probably at least 80% or more of the time it's because somebody wants to eat that way versus being told, Hey, you know, for health reasons, you have to eat this way. And so, you know, we have these diets where, you know, great, we get to this goal. There's an end goal there of, you know, going to my wedding or going to the beach on July 4th and looking a certain way. Great. I got there, but to your point, what about tomorrow? What about next week, next year, the next 10 years of your life? Like, what do you do now? Do you continue that? Is it sustainable? Like, are you just going to go back to what you were doing um, and then have to try another, you know, diet that's out there, uh, what they call yo-yo dieting, you know, where we only do it when we want to do, you know, some special event or look a certain way for a certain reason. Then we just go back to whatever, you know, because that's what we like. So yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, diets like that out there, but with no long term sustainable plan to continue that health journey or continue whether it's weight loss or just kind of maintaining and feeling better. There's no there's no long term. It's just do this until and then then what? Right, and I I think a a problem uh, for a lot of people in this country and maybe worldwide is discipline. You know, it's To be disciplined, to eat in a healthy manner consistently over the long term, I think that's where people fail. Anyone can, you know, lose so many pounds and because they see the end in sight. Okay, I've got three months and I'm going to lose this much weight and that's possible. They calculate it. Yeah. But the problem comes is after that. They didn't change their lifestyle. All they did was change the way they're eating over a certain period of time to get to a certain weight. And why do it if you're not going to keep it? That's that's always been my philosophy. Why get there if you're not going to stay there? Yeah, and and, and you're right in terms of, you know, we just we want to get to that end goal, whatever that is. And, And at the end of the day, you know, what's the point? The whole point, you know, for me, when I talk to clients as a personal trainer, as a nutrition coach, you know, I talk to them about, let's talk about sustainable changes you can make to your diet. So rather than, hey, you're eating, you know, this for breakfast, breakfast, lunch and dinner. Now let's go on and I'm just going to pick one out of the hat here, the keto diet. And you're going to eat all of this stuff, no carbs, all that, you know, high fat, all these things. And we're going to get you to lose all this weight and, you know, get you to your goal. But then I'm not going to provide you any kind of way to actually sustainably stay on that particular, you know, diet or whatever 
you know, so you're just going to go back on your own. When I talk to, you know, my clients, it's like, well, let's implement, let's see what you're eating now. Let's implement these small changes, you know, so that I can, you know, talk to you about the importance of nutrition, talk to you about the importance of, you know, eating enough during the day or drinking enough water, whatever the case might be, or maybe all of it, you know, small changes, but as a society today, and I, I think you're right in terms of probably around the world, it's we want the results tomorrow, in a week, in a month, whatever the case might be, something that might normally take through regular lifestyle changes to your diet would maybe take six months. We want to do it in two because we got to go on a cruise, you know, or whatever. And so those things are kind of like crash diets where we're going to get there. And then guess what? We lost 20 pounds, for example. Um, but then we're gaining 35 because, you know, we just stopped and then we go, oh, well, that diet didn't work. And, you know, I'm, I'm tired of going on diets because they never work. Well, they did work. It did exactly what you wanted it to do. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't even do that. I'm just giving it the benefit of the doubt here, but, uh, you know, we just don't stick with it because we, to your point, we don't change the lifestyle. We just go for that quick, you know, end result and then stop. And so that's where that, you know, yo-yo thing comes around. Yeah. In my opinion, this is really how you have to do it. You have to change. If you're overweight, you've made some bad choices probably, or something's wrong. Uh, so you need to figure out what that is and you need to change the choices that you make and you need to have a, fr uh, a frame of mind to where I'm going to make these changes indefinitely. I'm going to make these changes forever. And this is how I'm going to live. This is how I'm going to eat. Um, because it has to be, you have to be able to maintain it. And if you can't, there's really no reason to do it. So you use the word lifestyle. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to eat this way. Does that mean you have to be perfect all the time? No. But maybe you cheat once a week or once every two weeks or, or whatever it is. And that kind of gives you an outlet. Hey, you know, on Friday night, I get to go out with my wife and I'm going to have a beer or whatever you're going to do. Um, but you have to have some structure and you have to make lifestyle choices and usually lifestyle changes so that you can maintain this. Otherwise, it's not worth doing. I mean, you're flushing your investment down the toilet if you lose 20 pounds and then gain 30 back. Right. You just wasted that effort. You know, that's an effort to do that. And just for to be so temporary also, if you don't maintain. So if you're going to go on any type of a diet and everyone has a diet, but if you're going to go on one of these specific diets, you have to decide that you're going to be eating like this um, forever. Now, you may make modifications. So I'm a big advocate of, you know, watching your calories and monitoring your macros. That's your fat, your protein, and your carbs. And I'm a big advocate of this too. The mistake that most people make, even people that are eat healthy and eat whole foods, especially my age in their 60s, they're not getting enough protein. We talked about this before. They're not getting enough protein. So, and if you're eating 2,000, 2,500 calories and you're not paying attention to your protein, you're not getting enough. And I think younger people can get away with it uh, with, you know, 100 grams of protein, someone who's pretty active. They can get away with that. I can't get away with that. I need more protein to maximize my health and my um, weight also my, my appearance it's so that's, that's the most important macro eat healthy foods. And especially if you're older, you got to get that protein. And I think that's the one thing that people don't pay enough attention to, especially as they age. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. Protein is, is something where, you know, again, I, I ask my clients all the time when we first meet and throughout kind of our time together as trainer and um, and client, you know, how, what is your diet like today? What do you normally eat? Those types of things. And I'd say nine times out of 10, you know, what they describe to me that they're eating 
even if it's healthier food, um, there's not a lot of protein in there. So, you know, that's one of the first things that we talk about is the importance of we need to get you more protein, especially when, you know, if you're if you're doing things where you're getting more active, whether it's the gym or something else, your body's moving more, your muscles are moving more. And if you're in here in the gym and you're working, say, with a trainer and we're trying to increase your strength, that's not going to happen. It definitely won't happen very quickly. But, you know, uh, if we don't have enough protein. So that's one of the things I always bring up is that amount of protein. Um, it's really, really important. People kind of have the misconception of, well, you know, I want to lose weight, so I'm going to cut out uh, every carb or, you know, certain things. And I, and I tell people all the time, I'm like, that is, you know, yes, if you want to do the keto diet and that's what your heart's set on, yeah, you know what, there's certain ways to do that. But are you going to be able to continue that? Are you going to get enough protein? What does your meal plan look like that you're you're wanting to start? You know, let's take a look at it. Because at the end of the day, you have to have enough protein, regardless of Mediterranean or you know whatever it, whatever it is that you're wanting to do. Or in my in my thoughts, a more balanced diet, which includes a lot of different foods, carbohydrates, good fats, protein for sure. In my in my life, of course, I have you know a different type of meal plan. But one of the things that's really important for me as a competitor eight weeks out right now is protein, protein, protein. But you don't have to be a competitor or an athlete or a, you know somebody who's super fit. But if you're going to want to have your overall health be at its optimal levels, you still have to have a sufficient amount of protein. And it just kind of goes up as you increase your activity and things like that. So it's really important um, for people of all ages. But to your point, especially for folks who are getting you know, older in age, you need to have that protein. It's vital. Yep. You have to be conscious of protein. You have to be aware of protein. And especially like I eat about 2000 calories, 2200 calories a day. If I don't pay attention to my protein, if I'm not getting enough amino acids, which is in protein, um, it, it's not going to it benefit me uh, as much as I could be benefited if I'm really keeping my protein up, it's, it's the most important thing I believe also, especially as you age, but also as you're young. And if you're eating 5,000 calories a day, everyone's getting enough protein, uh, but you're getting probably too much of just about everything. Uh, but if you eliminate processed foods and you eat whole foods, look and see, get one of those calorie counters. It'll track your macros. It'll tell you how much protein you put your food in. It'll tell you how much protein you're getting. And you know what? You'd be surprised at how much you're not getting. And I know people are going to ask, they always ask how much protein. This is my opinion. You're going to hear a lot of opinions on this. I want, I weigh about 175. So I'm trying to get one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Now, I'm also not overweight. I don't have a lot of fat. So if I weighed 200 pounds, and I wanted to weigh 175, I would make sure that I was getting 175 grams of protein. That's how I figure it out. And if, if you're going to err on the side of too low or too high, I like to err on the side of too high. That's just for me. And that's the amount of protein that I'm shooting for and I, that I think everyone should shoot for. Even a woman, you know, a 120 pound woman, that's not very big. But 120 grams of protein, if you don't pay attention to that, you're not going to get that much. Yeah, I agree. And that's that's the thing is we need to make sure, you know, if again, if there's weight loss, that's something as somebody needs to do for health reasons or or whatnot. You know, that's one of the things that you don't want to cut back too much on is the protein. Yes, we don't want to. To your point, a gram per pound of body weight is a great you know goal to have and say, OK, I'm going to set it so that I have. You know, for me, 206 pounds right now. And since I'm a competitor, it's definitely different than the average diet. I'm going to, you know, I'm at like 240 grams of protein because I want more to maintain muscle, etc. But as a person, you know, who's not competing, just general public who comes into the gym, you know, yeah, you know, shoot for that gram. Because if let's say you're 100 and again, 170 pounds, you know, great. Try to have 170 pounds because, you know, that's going to help 
you know, maintain that muscle mass that you have, you know, grow a little bit of muscle mass. So that way, you know, if you're in here, you're getting the benefits of, you know, enough protein of your exercise that you're doing in here, whether it's weightlifting or other things, your energy is there, you know, your, your body's able to function. We start, you know, getting less and less protein. A lot of these things fall off. And then we say, well, I've changed my diet and I've tried to go to the gym and you know, weight loss isn't happening. I feel terrible, all these other things. Well, it's because we're not paying attention to what we're actually eating. Um, I'm eating healthy. You know, healthy is this, you know, um, this boxed thing from uh, the freezer section at the grocery store or, you know, one of those types of things. And, and you don't you don't look and go, well, there's a lot of crazy ingredients, whole other uh, podcast for that. But, uh, you know, not any protein. And then that's the only thing I eat in a day or whatever the case might be. We don't pay enough attention to that protein intake where it comes from, but also just in general to make it easier if we even get enough to begin with. That's why I always tell my clients, let's make those small incremental changes. So, you know, let's do this for three to four weeks. This one change, let's add breakfast, you know, um, to your to your meals every day since you know you don't eat breakfast. Let's add that. Do that every day for the next three to four weeks. Okay, we've got breakfast down. Okay, let's work on lunch or let's work on eating more protein at dinner. Those types of changes, you're going to feel a lot different, but you can't expect like those lose 30 pounds in 30 days and here's this keto diet that you can do. Great. But when I gain 40 pounds back for my 30 pound weight loss, I'm just going to basically give up on myself and you shouldn't. You should just start in, you know, now starting on, you know, that, that journey to kind of lose that weight slowly and healthy rather than quick, you know, quick kind of a scheme of, you know, weight loss versus an actual balanced, you know, weight loss or muscle gain or whatever the case might be. There's, there's ways to do it. It takes longer, but it's more beneficial long-term. Yeah. And just, just to kind of really fine tune what, what you said about the protein and the amount of protein that I recommend. And I think that you recommend, so you're leaner than you usually are right now. So your projected protein is more than what you actually weigh because you're leaner right now. Your body may naturally want to sit at 235. So you're eating 235 grams of protein, even though you weigh 205. And it also goes in reverse. If you weigh 350, you don't have to eat 350 grams of protein. You're wasting it. Um, so if you weigh 350 and you want to weigh 200, 200, in my opinion, 200 grams of protein is enough. If 200 is the right weight for you. So that's how I estimate the amount of protein to eat. What is the right weight for me? And that's, I eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight of what is a healthy weight for my body. Right now, you're leaner than normal, but you're trying to, actually, it's funny, you're kind of trying to knock things out of whack. You're trying to maintain more muscle and get rid of more fat than what your body wants to do. Oh, yeah, it's fighting me every step of the way, but that's how it goes. <laughs> well, that's the name of the game when you're doing shows. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's uh, not really for your health, but uh, it's not that it can't be healthy, but... So, David, um, if people want to follow you on social media, see what you're doing, how can they follow you? So, Steve, I have two Instagram pages, the one with kind of my show progress, my health journey over the past couple of years. Um, you can go to Instagram at David Wright underscore fitness and then at Wright Fitness Training for personal training tips, boot camp, things like that. Okay. And if you guys have questions or comments, or you can relate to some of the things we've said, or you have ideas, it doesn't have to be what I think, put them in the comment section. I get a lot of comments on my shorts and on a lot of my videos that I really respect, even though they're opinions that don't 100% agree with mine. But usually when I get those comments, people have a very good reason for their opinions. And I, I really appreciate that and like hearing those opinions, especially when people have a reason for what their opinion is. So thanks for being with us, David, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks, Steve.